Hey, welcome everybody to my live stream again. Thank y'all so much for joining me. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're joining me from. Let me give a shout out to the NTZ crew. I see Jacob Tanjay on here. I know Michael beat your life with boots on the ground. I don't know if he's here yet. All my new viewers and subscribers, anybody catching me on replay, and of course my old heads, that's 53 shades darker. I was talking to somebody the other day who, oh uh, yeah, Willie. Here's another Timothy Carter. He says, I've joined several Facebook groups for black men and Asian women, mostly penile active. When I repeat some of the things you've experienced firsthand, the women moderators kick me out. Well, yeah, they... They don't want the word to get out. Okay. They're trying to protect their image. Rightfully so. But yeah, they don't like to hear the truth. And remember, we don't generalize over here. So maybe that's what they're thinking. You're generalizing. Because I don't say all Filipinos. I give you my boots on the ground experience. But you're going to get that. What's up, John? I wasn't able to look at the, the peso today like I normally do. I hope it hasn't dipped below 54. But let's take a look at something real quick. Yeah, I can do something. Wait. Okay, let's see. Let me see, to the PHP. Okay, okay. It's 54.05, guys. So it's right there at 54. What's up, D? He said, glad to be here, brother. You're doing a great job. Don't ever change. Simplify. Oh, yeah. If it ain't broke, don't break it. That's my saying. Some guy says, no, it, it, it's, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. No, if it ain't broke, don't break it. What's up, Sam Champion? Say, good morning, Calvin and Sunshine Crew. Shout out to the NTZ. What's up, King B? Tim West. Yeah, the name of the topic today is the gorilla in Manila. Talking about how to deal with that traffic up there. Not only in Manila, but a lot of these urban cities. And I'm going to need y'all's input on this too. But according to Tom Tom, it's a technology specialist group. Metro Manila has the second worst traffic congestion in the world among 416 cities in 57 countries. If you've ever been to Manila for any considerable period of time, maybe even one day, you're going to see that traffic. It's nerve-wracking, man. It'll blow your whole trip. But I've got some solutions here, too, because I put a link in the description of a great article from around town. It talks about the traffic and some things you can do. but According to its annual traffic index, drivers are expected to spend on average 53% extra travel time being stuck in traffic, man. That's crazy. If you've never been to Manila, this is why I always suggest the new guys to fly into Cebu. Even Cebu's traffic is getting bad, but not as bad as Manila. And at least you'll be able to get out of the airport. According to them, it costs the Philippines economy about $70 million a day. Wow. A can of beans says, uh, does the heat ever get sickening, Calvin? You must have to shower a few times a day. Well, it, you, it definitely do, does that, and it's starting to pick up. But right now, we've had a lot of overcast, cloudy days with no humidity, really. I think it has to do with this low pressure that's in the country. But yeah, you have to take, I, I take on average about two to three showers a day, one in the morning, then 
one in the afternoon. And of course, if I work out, so you have about three. But it doesn't really get sick then because just like dealing with this traffic, you learn how to deal with that heat. You got to plan your trips, man. And then you got to leave early or late, which is kind of the opposite of what you do with with the traffic here. Hey, Phil, Steven says, can of beans, Jersey gets hotter in the summer. What's up, Pete? Yeah, Bachelor of Science, what's up? Yeah, 53 Shades Darker. I was with Willie, and his, I saw them in Baraka. I think they're in the Val now. Because he, he watched my live stream, and his girlfriend said, hey, if you want to meet us for lunch, and I did. What's up, Haitian gunman? Robert Dames says, always stay fit, Cal. The Spartans say sweat in the gym so you don't bleed in the war. B. John Banks said, visiting Thailand in April might pop over to Cebu. Man, that'd be a good thing. What's up, Daryl? Yeah, I guess. You know, they've got some options, but that's one of the problems with Manila. They got very few options, you know, as far as mass transit. They've got that MRT, which is the mass rapid transit system. That's something sort of like a subway. And then they've got the light, the light rail transit. It's like a commuter train like you see in Chicago or something like that. Those are two options, but man, the lines are long in certain places. It's just not enough, really, to accommodate all the people who really need that uh, transportation to alleviate the traffic jams. It's just not enough yet, but they're working on that. You know, of course, you can catch the bus. What's up, King Arthur? Thanks for the super chat. He said, great job, Calvin. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. I know you said you're planning your trip. Uh, Jim Crane said, Cal, I'm paying some Filipinos telemarketing $6 an hour. They're doing an okay job, but other people tell me that $4 an hour is extremely good pay. If I pay more than $4 an hour, I'm getting ripped off. Yeah, six dollars an hour, man. Come on, they—that's a lot of money over here. Okay, but see, that's Western thinking, Jim. Mostly, the telemarketers that I talk to over here—they're earning about three dollars per hour, six dollars per hour. Man, you're giving them Western pay. Hell, minimum wage is seven twenty-five in America. You know, I mean, you know, they're still trying to give you that. Six, I mean, at seven twenty-five. But yeah, that that's extremely uh, a lot of money. When okay, take a look at that. That the peso is fifty-four. So that's six four. That's three hundred and twenty-four pesos. You paying them an hour, dude? Okay, per hour. When the the rate in San Carlos is three eighty-five per day. <clears throat> but it's your money. Hey, Timothy Carter, thanks for that super sticker. Yeah, it's your money, man. I, I wouldn't do it. <clears throat> hey, 53 Shades Darker says, Makati, too much smoke for millions of bikes. I don't like it. Stayed at the Gramercy many times. Just can't stand the traffic. Yeah, it's something that a new man, a woman, a new visitor to, to the Philippines is not going to like. You know, some of the Solutions that they gave in that article was, um, let me look. It says avoid the rush hour, which is like mid morning and all of evening. It's the, the, the mid morning they're saying 7 a.m. to 9 30 a.m. and 5 p.m. until night, you know. And they're saying because, you know, so, you know, because of the telemarketing jobs there and the different hours people are working, man. That rush hour can be a beast. And then it says, try to have a central location, you know, like around Mall of Asia, Makati, like 53 Shades Dark said, BGC, if you can afford it, Manila proper, you know, that way, this is where most of all the activity is, anyhow. So a lot of 
Sometimes you can walk to those places. Certainly, you want to go from A to B. That's what it says. Plan your trips. June Carter says, you said don't. You said you don't drive over there. Does it snow there? No, no. The average temperature here in the Philippines is 82 degrees year round. No, it doesn't snow. No, it doesn't snow over here. Uh, Timothy Clark said, I use time time GPS when GPS first came out. They're good. Yeah, Sam Champion says, I, I don't care how hard you try. There's no taming of that Manila gorilla traffic. I refuse to have a drive there. Yeah. It, you know, that's what they said in the article. They said, you know, there's no way around it, but you can do some things to kind of, you know, make your experience not so bad. The Bachelor of Science said the power went out last night without the earth kind of heat was stifling. What's the worst time for it to go out at night? I can deal with a brownout in the daytime, but night, no. Matthew James says, get all of that damn jeepney smoke. Yeah, traffic, see, that's what messes up traffic in Manila, too. Those damn jeepneys, they stop every five feet. And, I mean, these things are old, man. But you got to understand, guys, remember, we're in the Philippines. These people are frontliners. Without that jeepney, a lot of people couldn't get back and forth to work. They couldn't afford it. You know, but I'm just telling you as a visitor's perspective, or maybe somebody that lives up there, what you can do, man, to try to head off this steam, man. It's traffic up there. It's one of the reasons I don't go to Manila. It's just too congested. What's up, Will? He said, good morning, Cal and NGZ crew. I'm headed to Manila Airport in a few, but definitely not driving. I'll be riding there before the rush hour, hopefully. Well, hell, you, you're going to be after the rush hour. They said 7 a.m. to 9.30. Hey, have a comfortable trip back, man. You know, when I got that text from Will in Barakai, I thought it was you, Will, said, but it was my buddy Will from Texas. Willie ain't no joke either. Sash in the Philippines via U.S. Says it took us almost two hours to get out of Manila traffic leaving from the airport. Yeah, it says right here, it says Filipinos spend an average of four days in Manila's infamous traffic jams every year. Wow, that's a lot of time, man. Hey, Andy H., what's going on? Thanks for joining us. There's that super chat from King Arthur. I always like to acknowledge that. Yusuf Amar Beef said, if Manila was the second most congested, what was the first? It depends on what study. Some say Mumbai, then some say up there in Russia, somewhere in Russia, believe it or not. Uh, Ryan, U.S. Navy says, earthquake in the Vile. Yeah, it's always going on in that area, down in the Vile. Uh, 6.0, wow. Yeah, there's a lot of earthquakes there. Okay, JV said, Cal, your motorbikes, how far away and how long can this be rented? Any mileage limit? There's no, there's no mileage limit. I'm just doing this for Maryland. You know, I asked a lot of Maryland for her to quit her job. And I'm trying to help her to establish some type of just a business like that. It's, you know, low overhead. You know, nobody else is doing Nobody else offers it in St. Charles City. It's the only reason I did it. But no, there's no mileage limit. It's just, you know, 24-hour period. And you can take it anywhere, really. I got that from uh, Derek, that idea from Derek. You know, we're trying to help my viewers and subscribers coming over here. That's why you got the guest house for free for two nights, you know. But, yeah, we make it easier. Like, dealing with Derek, dealing with me, it's just easier. And I think that's a great rate, 400 Boy, that's a brand new uh, Hind the Click in Maryland. The 160 is only a couple of months old. But no, there's no mileage limit. You can drive that thing all day, but don't drive it in Manila because you won't be able to get anywhere. 
Hollywood Baby says, hey, brother Cal, blessed to be able to see you today, my friend. Absolutely, we are blessed. Patty Glidden says, hi, Cal, from Alberta, Canada. Wow, minus 25. Wow. Yeah, you're cold up there, buddy. There's that super sticker from Tim. I always like to acknowledge this stuff, guys. What's up, Louise? I know you're going to be coming here shortly, man. Let me know when you touch down. Albert Einstein said, dude is getting ripped off, but how can he go backwards now? What are you talking about? I don't understand. David Rodriguez says, hey, Cal, I was catching up on your videos. I was three or four videos behind, but I'm all caught up just in time for the live stream. Hey, thanks, brother. Okay, Jim, he said, thank you so much. I knew it, but that boots on the ground knows for sure. You just saved me a lot. Thanks a million. Yeah, and I, I don't want to cheat anybody over here either, but yeah, that's a lot of money over here. Six dollars an hour and help. You could pay me six dollars an hour to talk on the phone, Jim. That's a lot of money. I'm pretty sure they love that. Hey, Lab Legends says, Hey, Cal, just got back from the Philippines. I don't know if you have ever been to Baguio, but the streets there are the steepest I ever been on. The traffic's not congested, but so steep. Yeah, Baguio's become a tourist mecca too now. I've never been there. I know very little about Luzon. Most of my experience is in Visayas and Mindanao. I got a lot to learn. But one of my subscribers coming here in June, he wants me to take a trip with him. And right now, as it stands right now, I'm going to do it. From north all the way down to south. Okay. Will says, okay, 53 mocked him for sure. I spent a night in Manila and headed to Mindanao oh, tomorrow morning. Oh, so you're still here. I thought you were going home, Will. This next video I'm uploading now <laughs> is going to shock a lot of people. I'm on this Wi-Fi, so it's going to take a while to get it. Maybe at that time this, is, this live stream is over, it'll be uploaded. But I'm just talking about why I don't support that $1,000 per month budget anymore. You know, so many of us are dropping by the wayside, guys. We're leaving because we don't have enough money. We don't have enough budget. And I give you that number one reason that's in there. Because the guys that I've been talking to, they, they live different lifestyles. But they have that one thing in common. Hey, what's up, Vince? He says, Unc, I love Manila. Actually, I'm flying there on Friday. The traffic and many people don't bother me. I travel opposite of public. Yeah. I mean, I like Manila. Don't get me wrong, but I can't, you know, if you stay up there for any period, Vince, which I don't know. That's right. You stayed 30 days up there before. You, I'm pretty sure you got caught in that, though. I, I can't say anybody who loves that type of traffic. But, yeah, usually I'll Pick me a spot and I go there the whole day. Like Mall of Asia, I just make that a whole day trip and go across the street. They've got like, it's like a boulevard type of thing. I don't want to call it Manila Bay because it's not. Manila Bay is further down by the embassy. But yeah, you kind of make it uh, an all day affair, guys. Plan your trips, man. Matthew James is right. Ha ha. They're all private, so they're gunning for money. Okay. Andy H says, my wife, when she was working in BGC five years ago at a call center, she was paid 35,000 pesos monthly, yeah, and 3,500 travel allowance. Yeah, if you're good up there in Manila, Cebu, you can earn good money. Around that time, a little bit further back, they had a nice article. I believe it was in the Sun Star or the Field Star. I can't remember. But some of those with bonuses and everything like that, some of those call centers agents were earning forty to 60000 per month. I mean, they were living high, too. I mean, they were really living good up there. You know, those are the the good 
you know, the good ones, though. But hell, you know, a, a job, now those are brutal jobs. Right? They're not easy, Andy H. Because I read another article where you see that people can't go to the bathroom. You know, they really own them, but they make them earn that money. But that's a good job to have. <clears throat> Brian Nichols says, Eagles for the Super Bowl win. Yeah, I'm glad you brought this up, man. You know, everybody's getting on my nerves with this this failure to success story with, with Jalen Hurts. I don't consider him a failure, ever. Okay, he won a championship as a freshman. Actually started that second year, 99% of the time for another uh, national championship. You know, loses his job to Tua. He, remember, he's on full scholarship, getting, a, getting an education, playing a game he loves. But, you know, the cream rises to the top. You know, I, I was shocked that Tua took over his spot because I thought Jason – I thought Jalen Hurt was better, but who am I? I mean, you know, but yeah, but to feel sorry for Jalen Hurts, no. Am I happy for him? Absolutely, but no, it's no, it's not a, it's not a rags to riches, guys. This this dude is good. He, to start at Alabama as a freshman, <laughs> you would gotta be good, man. Come on, guys. Okay. Uh, but as a sense of Calvin, how many subscribers did you have when you started doing live streams? Not many. Uh, when, you know, when I first was doing my live streams, you got to realize I was doing them on uh, StreamYard because I hadn't, I wasn't monetized yet on YouTube. You have to be monetized on YouTube to do YouTube live streams, okay? But you can do live streams with StreamYard. And, they, you know, nobody can send you a super chat or anything like that, uh, obviously. But you can still do them, man. It was a it was a suggestion of one of my subscribers. He said, you know, why don't you get to know your your viewers and subscribers? And it was the best piece, one of the best pieces of advice I've, I've received because when guys come over here, it's like I know them already. You know, I was with Will and his girlfriend. It's like, it was like being with old friends, man. And I had only seen him one time before. But it's like that with everybody. Philip Cooper, when he came there. Oliver. Greg Williams. When they all come to my house. Vince Lawson. It's like I know them already. And it's from these live streams. And anybody who has a YouTube channel really needs to do live streams. Now, I know with the women, it can be kind of sketchy because you got to be careful. But as a man, you know, the, the foreigners that have them, you got to do them. Uh, Mike Dawsonville said traffic in the Valley is just as bad as traffic in Manila nowadays. They need to put more traffic lights in the street. Yeah, it's, man, there's so much stuff here that, that'll blow your mind. In San Carlos City at the main thoroughfare, guys, I'm talking about this is a national highway going one way, then the main street going the other way. There's no stop sign. There's no traffic light. There's no yield. There's no flashing light. There's nothing there. I'm like, wow. A poised for duty says, well, you could live on an island within an island, BGC. Yeah, that's what it says right here. If you can afford it. You know, BGC is not for punks. OK, you better bring everything you got to BGC. Wow, he said most earthquakes aren't even reported in the Philippines. Derek says, I spent the summer in New Delhi and the traffic there is brutal. Now, is that still called New Delhi or is that? I know Bombay was changed to Mumbai, you know, <laughs> once they kicked the the British out of there. Uh, 53 Shades Darker says, Cal, how's Anthony doing? Met him at the meet and greet. Oh, man, you wouldn't know Anthony now, man. He met a nice woman, man. He's living his life, man. Things are really turning around for him. And I'm happy for him, man, because the first time I met him, we all went out to eat. I could see he's got a good spirit, man. 
he's like a gentle giant, man. But now, yeah, he's rolling. He's got a good woman next to him, and things are looking up for him. Uh, Matthew James says, true, Mike, that would solve a lot of problems, more traffic lights, but that's Philippines. Bill, 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 no traffic regulation. But in this article, they said one of the reasons that causes the traffic to be so bad, which you don't see this in America for a fact, it says weak enforcement of traffic laws. See, and that's another thing. You know, they'll, they'll get you, I guess, when they feel like it. But yeah, they said weak enforcement of traffic laws because if you've ever been to the Philippines, you know all over the Philippines, no matter where you go, it's a free for all mentality. I mean, traffic just going everywhere. There's not a whole lot of, you know, traffic laws. And if, if you're a foreigner, there aren't any until you are involved in an accident. Then all of a sudden, yeah. But until then, Hey, Patty says, Calvin, have you ever encountered poisonous snakes, box jellyfish, spiders, or scorpions there? Only spiders, but not poisonous. But they're so big, they scare you. Because I'm not used to seeing spiders. All of that stuff is here, and I don't know about scorpions. But I knew them box jellyfish can be a problem in the Philippines. But I've got some information from my friend Doug. He owns a Beach Resort in Calatrava, Negros Occidental, small fry. He said, Calvin, the only time you have to worry about those jellyfish is when the water is still. He said, the water is still, then you be cautious. He said, but when it's normal, like it always is, waves and stuff, he said, you really don't have to worry about it. He said, uh, he's got a sign. He's got, he's one of the few um, resorts that has a sign uh, saying that at certain times, jelly, be careful of the jellyfish, because a lot of these resorts, they don't have them. And, you know, people die here, and people get stung all the time. You know, the one that comes to mind is the um, the little Italian Filipino swimmer. They were, on, they were doing island hopping, and they, you know, was at one of the stops, you know, snorkeling, and she's in like knee deep water and she got stung and the boat didn't have any first aid because they say hit it with some table vinegar. And yeah, she ended up dying, man, seven years old. Imagine they're here on vacation. But two weeks prior to that, a two year old got stung and died in that same area, but there was no sign. Ray Skilling says, three hours to drive 38 kilometers on a Saturday night. Wow. People walking the streets dressed in black made it hard to drive. Yeah, I don't drive over here. Um, and it's one of the reasons I, I, I don't. It's just a free for all, and I'm not used to it. What's up, Market Focus? Says, what's up, Cal? I can't wait to get to Cebu. I love Cebu, man. He said, what time is it there? It's 9.58 a.m., beautiful Thursday morning. I missed, I was traveling Sunday and Tuesday. I'm almost sure, yeah. No, no, Sunday, I didn't have my live stream because the Wi-Fi where I was in that hotel, it wasn't, I wasn't even going to try it. Stylish over 60 says, hey, Cal, how's it going? Traffic in Manila is just a bad. It's being caught in, in, in Chicago loop during the rush hour. Yeah, it says right here to avoid the rush hour, mid-morning, 7 to 9.30 and 5 p.m. until night. Uh, Yusuf said, Calvin, do you know if a foreigner can own a land house if it's put in his child's name and trust? If the child was Philippine citizen, that's a good question for a lawyer. But, you know, back being a minor, I really don't know. You could probably put the name of the child on the, you know, they can put anybody's name on the deed. Merlin can put mine on there. That's what she was telling me the other day. And will it mean anything? I don't know. 
Yeah, right, Derek. You know, this is what gets me about sports fans. They're so fickle. And they know good and well, they were showing somebody on Facebook and ran a clip of all these experts and everybody. They were down on the man. He ain't going to do this. He ain't going to do that. Same as in Philly. Those fans, they're all, he's the greatest thing since sliced bread right now. But you know, when they drafted him, you didn't see him as the as the future of that franchise. And somebody, you know, I mean, you could, it's just like people saying, oh, I knew Michael Jordan was going to be the greatest ever and all of that. You're lying. You didn't know that. Michael Jordan has transcended sports, but you got people say, oh, yeah, I knew it all the time. Yeah, well, he was a great player. Uh, King B. Stacker says, my budget will be twelve fifty a month. I hope that will be enough. I already live a minimalistic lifestyle, so I hope that living there, I can save some money. Well, I'm going to tell you something, man. I'm going to tell you, just like I told everybody on this video. I don't know if it's uploaded yet. I don't know what the Wi-Fi really is like here. But listen, guys, um, if you got a woman, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. It's going to be hard, King B. I'm just letting you know right now, okay? I'm not going to sugarcoat it. You got a woman, that $1,000 budget and all that stuff, it goes out the window. Because it's hard to maintain yourself and a woman. Okay? Don't say I didn't tell you. Okay? And, yeah, the video's already up, guys. I want to make sure. Yeah. And see, most of us I'm going to say all bets is off then. You know, if I can't come over here and have a woman, well, you just got to have to have more money. Can you do it? Absolutely. I was looking at it from a strictly a cost of living, running the numbers. Realistically, it's not going to work. I woke up out of my sleep last night. I said, I got to make this video because it's not going to work. Two guys contacted me. They both are going home and Coincidentally, they both had strokes, okay, which, you know, living with a Filipino can't give you a stroke when you don't have enough money. But their lifestyles were totally different. The only thing they had in common, they were living with a woman. It just ain't enough, man. You're going to run out of money. She's not going to, you're not going to be able to maintain a Filipino on the three or 400 pesos per day she's used to getting. Her expectations go up. OK, when she gets with you, her wants increase. She eats more. See, what most of us don't realize is this. Filipinos don't change when you take them over to your country. They change the minute they decide they want to start fooling with a foreigner. When they make up their mind that they want to start dealing with foreigners, they change right then and there. Fundamentally. It's a, it's a paradigm shift in their head. They no longer want the Filipino lifestyle. They want anything to do with it, really, but the food. Other than that, all we do is quicken the pace, okay? And I tell you on that video, they go through that process of osmosis. It's gradual, it's unconscious, but slowly she shifts to your way of thinking, your ideas, your attitudes, and your standard of living. She'll never go back to being the same, guys. Okay? I, I've already given Maryland 15000 this week, really more than that. Believe That's a lot of money, guys, okay, for a Filipina. But, you know, I'm not there, so whatever she needs, I got to give it to her. You know, but I'm just telling you that. That's the reason why that thou I had, had to go back on that. Because we're going to have a woman, man, and, it just, and it's just not going to work. It's not going to add up. She's going to start being around other foreigners and with their Filipinas, and her expectations are going to rise. 
See, it has nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do with you. They let the cat out of the bag a long time ago. Life with a foreigner brings away to some opportunities. Okay, they already know this in their mind. You, there's nothing you can do to change it. Remember they said all they think all foreigners is rich? Well, there's nothing you can do to change that. So then when you know when you get this just not gonna be enough, guys. Okay, you know, I just want you to don't say I didn't tell you. Because strictly from a numbers thing, now if you want to go on a six month sabbatical or one year sabbatical and move to the Philippines and let your wounds heal from that beating you're taking over there in the West, absolutely you can do it. And you can have a great time doing it. But if you come over here and set up shop with a live-in girlfriend, you chasing women in the bars, or you get this casual dating stuff, a thousand dollars per month is not gonna be enough. There's very few men here, retirees, who are single, single, meaning there's no woman anywhere in their life. Very few. Okay? So I'm just going to give you the nitty gritty. I'm never going to uh, sugarcoat it, man. But I had to back off of that only because of the woman. And, of course, our spending habits aren't going to change right away. But the number one reason is that woman, man, you're not going to do it, guys. She, 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 you know, I've lived with three women over here. I, I didn't even have to look at those two guys that contacted me. I could look at my own experience and tell you. Two of them are in America right now. They change a long time before you ever meet them. So if, if, if you're thinking, oh, your woman changed when you took her home. Now, she's already changed. You got a lot to learn, buddy. You got a lot to learn. She's already changed. Uh, Raymond Walker said most of the Filipinos have been struggling their whole life. So when they meet a foreign, it's freedom. It's freedom, so to speak. 1,000 is not enough for one person, let alone a family. It's not enough for you and that woman, it ain't going to be enough, man. Even if you use John's plan, he was giving Janessa 12,000 pesos per month, but that was just an allowance. It's going to save you money putting on allowance, but it's going to eat up that $1,000, guys. 12,000, that's one-fourth of the $1,000 budget. Now, okay, you got to buy food for her. If you go to the resort, if you take a trip, Wherever you go, she's going with you. You got to do all of that. A thousand ain't going to get it. You can try it. I'm not going to discourage you from not trying it, but now if you were single, single, which you're not going to be, you could do it. And you lived a simple life. Uh, Yusuf says that the woman already has a decent job, then it won't be as bad as I think. Hmm. Well, what do you consider a decent job over here? Which is hard to come by unless she's a call center agent. And then you're never going to see her because she's going to work at night. And then she's going to sleep during the day. She's not a robot. Uh, D of J, C and C, D of J, C and C. He says, you flying all the way across the world, 14 hour difference, and you coming with a $1,000 beer budget. Well, I'm going to tell you something, though. If you want the benefit of, of a low cost of living, yeah, because that $1,000 is going to get you more here than in America. 1000 is only going to pay your rent in America, unless you got Section 8 food stamps, the medical card, and all of that which you're probably going to qualify for with $1,000 per month over in America. Over here, it's going to get you a start. You could actually live by yourself. If you were just over here, you wanted to just come over here and get a break from America, 1000 will do it. But we're not going to do that. Most of us will tell you before they even get on the plane, I'm going over there to find me a wife our girlfriend. That's what this Passport Bro movement is all about. They're talking about seeing their op they're, they're really talking about traveling for women. I mean, 
Well, anyway, and he's introducing this girl that he's the 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 the, the video is only like a minute and thirty five seconds or something. He's introducing the girl. Oh, you should see the comments. We're so happy for you, bro. You went over there. You got you something and blah, blah, this. And I'm like, man, these young guys. But see, they're only going over there for two or three weeks and get it back home. But yeah, most of us would tell you right off the top, we're going there for a woman. Yeah, everybody's got their own opinion. You know, he says 3,000. Yeah, you're going to need about that if you got a woman. He said, Jerome Morgan said, what happened? Uh, that's just this. Uh, I'm in the Philippines, man. You know, it's just this. Wi-Fi over here sometimes is slow. Yeah, yeah, everybody's got their opinion. But, you know. Now, come on, man. He said, well, everybody got their opinion. He says, in my opinion, 2,000 to 4,000. Coming in monthly is recommended globally in second and third world countries. Rest in peace, Charles Tyler. Yeah, because you're going to have that woman, man. If you're living by yourself over here, which is unrealistic. That's why I said when you look at it from a realistic point, you're probably right. When you stick that woman beside you because she's your greatest expense, it's going to cost you. You're going to have to bring more money to compensate for her. The lady on True already told you it's going to cost you at least a thousand dollars per month. But y'all too busy salivating and slobbing over the girls. You don't listen to what they're saying. They're telling you the truth. By the time you get done buying this and buying that and taking her here and taking her there, you think y'all just going to sit around in this place like this and look at each other all day? No, she's going to want to go places to the mall. To see her family, around her friends, around your friends, to the beach. Yeah, he says I can rent a two-bedroom apartment for a little over hundred dollars a month. I don't want her to work, but she might have to. It's twelve fifty a month is enough. Well, you know what kind of place are you getting for a little over hundred a month for a two-bedroom apartment? Where are you talking about living, man? You must be talking about living in some little small place or somewhere. The less money you pay, the more of a shaky area you're going to live in over here. See, a lot of this rent is based on security. Let me educate you guys when you come over to the Philippines. Yeah, you could probably get, remember John said he was paying $35 a month and he did, they, they ran his ass out of there. He got drunk talking crazy. Okay. They ran his ass out of there. So the lower the rent, the lower the security rating. Yeah, he said living in a shack. You know, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dirk is right about this. He said third world country is an outdated and offensive term for a developing nation. It's more appropriate. Yeah, and even if you look up where they came up with that third world country stuff, Philippines is certainly not a third world country, but it had something to do with whether or not you were an ally of the United States during World War II. Or something crazy. You know how we come up with our own way of uh, our own terminology. Elfin Dumlap said, what's going on? He said, educate them, Cal. Yeah, it's true. You can pay, you know, $100 a month, but Lord. Now, in San Carlos City, it's different, but you do remember now there's no major hospital around. You, you can have everything done for about everything, including your utilities, internet, cable, water, for about $300 per month. Um, but you have to understand though that woman's going to break you she's already changed when you when before you meet her she's no longer that innocent Filipino you think she is because it starts in your mind look around you everything you see started in 
somebody's mind first. And that's how she ends up with you. It started in her mind first. I'm going to get me a foreigner because I'm sick, sick of this job. I'm standing up all day. I'm washing clothes all day. I'm at this factory all day. And then they know somebody else who has a foreigner already. The cat's been let out of the bag already. They see the motorcycles. They see the cars. They see the trips. They want that too. All you are is the means to the end. Because they're going to get it already. They made it up in their mind. They're going to get it. Uh, Vince Lawson said, Um, do you believe we help the problem by liberating the women? Because it seems like the more we help, the more we feed the beast. Well, that's sort of like what I'm saying, but you got to realize she's already, her thinking has already been liberated. Because now she's willing to go places she never would go before. And she's willing to do things that she never thought of doing before because she knows that's a prerequisite of being with a foreigner. She's already made it up in her mind. We just quicken the process, Vince. That's all we do. We just make the transformation faster because she, she's going to get it done. And before you know it, you wake up with some westernized woman with long hair and a Filipino accent. Trust me, man. I know what I'm talking about, okay? Merlin will never go back to being the same again. She's living a life now that she can't go back. You know, that's where we hurt them when they decide, okay, I'm going to jump, I'm going to ride that train, but you got to ride it all the way because when you jump off now, well, oh, it's going to beat you up. It's going to beat you up. But that's the reason why, guys, we can't do it. And that's why I had to. Um, Back off of that. Nothing's impossible. Okay? Remember that, too. And don't let what I say discourage you from coming over and trying. Because if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. At least you will know for yourself whether it can be done or not. Okay? And that's all I'm saying. Hey, Bradley Green says a three-bedroom gated clubhouse pool except for Manila 28,000. Yeah, that's pretty good. Hell, you want 28,000? Hell, but let's see. In three years, though, you done built the house. I mean, and more than likely, um, you're going to have a child or something by the end. So why not build the little house, you know? But it just depends, guys. It's your money. I, I'm just, I wanted to put that down on the record and saying I no longer advocate for that anymore because I know we're not going to come over here and be single, single. Jay Curl said, when you're dealing with a Philippine, nine times out of ten, she will come with a child. Well, no, not nine times out of ten. Y'all understand that single mothers, all around the world. And then it's the guys who are always talking about single mothers. We're the ones putting babies in the women and then running off. We're the same guys who do that. Then we want to turn around and say, we don't want single mothers. You can't have it both ways. You can't have your cake and eat it too. These are the ones who are saying that, you know, because a man in his right mind, who's already a man, his own man, earns his own way. OK, in the world. A woman's not going to make him. He, you know, she's not going to complete him because he's already complete. So if she has a son, a daughter, or two kids or something like that. He's looking a whole lot further than that. Man, that's petty, guys. When you really look at it, you're going to let the woman of your dreams go back because she got two kids. What about the mistakes you made? What about the mistakes we made? We come in over here with four and five kids, two and three divorces, unless you're young. Most of the guys on my channel are 45 and up. We're not going to spring chicken. So we come over here with all these demands. These are the same damn demands, let me remind you, that you're running from over there. Don't bring them over here and put them on this woman. There's an unspoken agreement already, guys, that you need to know about before you get on that plane. So when you come on the plane, you have no problem when you get over here. But no, we want to act like we don't know anything about that. 
oh, I'm go, I'm just going over here because of tra traditions and because of this. No, no, no. There's an unspoken agreement over here, guys, and you better know it if you don't know it. But to keep talking about single mothers and all of that, man, you know, what are you going to do? You, you got to get them right out of the cradle. People make mistakes. I mean, you know, you got to get them really, really early if that's what you want. I mean, right at 18. You got to catch them as soon as they walk across the stage and get their diploma. You got to be there to grab them if that's what you're talking about. You know. But then remember, let's be honest. If it's, if it's not about the money, look in the mirror because she's going to want something too. See, we don't want to look in the mirror. We don't want to look at ourselves. We want to look at the woman and say, oh, yeah, you got to have this. You got to have that. But what about you? What do you have to have? If it's, you saying it's not about the money, it's not about the new life, it's not about the visa, then what, if, what is it then? 18 to 80. Blind, crippled, or crazy, guys. Come on. Talk to me. You know, I haven't been on this channel for two years for nothing. There's an unspoken agreement. When you step on that plane, you better know about it. What's going on, Haywood Robinson? Thanks for that super chat. He said, Calvin, you had my head spinning. You bring up things I never thought of. Now... I have to go back to the drawing board and plan some more. Yeah, you know, it's just that I wanted to get this off of my shoulders. Hold on, guys. Let me cut on this Aircon. I cut it off when I make the video. Because a lot of times, man, I can think, I've got a lot of people out there who are thinking differently. They're saying there's no way you can do it off a thousand. I'm looking at it from a strictly cost of living perspective. I didn't look at it realistically and say, oh, this woman's going to be there. Okay. And uh, take up most of your money. Because you're not just going to sit there and look at each other all day long. And I don't care how simple she is. That's just the appearance she's giving you. This woman ain't simple. It takes a lot to want to deal with us, guys. When you meet a woman over here and she made up in her mind, she wants to deal with a foreigner and all the shit we bring to the table. Come on, man. These women ain't stupid, guys. And y'all need to learn that right today. You're not dealing with some little bitty innocent Look at these women making these videos now. You, these are the women you're dating. Uh, Men's Daily Advice and Encouragement Channel says, you got to catch them between the age of 18 to 24 with no kids and very little baggage. Yeah, but see, what are we bringing to the table then? If we're putting all these expectations on us, on the woman, you know, these guys coming over here in wheelchairs thinking women are going to be jumping all over them. They own canes, they blind. And I'm not talking about anybody. I'm just saying, guys, look, let's be realistic when we're talking about this. And then you're going to see some beautiful young woman. Well, it's your, your preference. But, I mean, when you end up meeting the wrong person, you're going to have yourself to blame. Uh, let's see. The balance of life to cow, it's petty because it's like the cattle calling the pot black. I have kids. Yeah, my wife has one. If you want to raise your wife, get you one of those kids when you get grown, enlightened, they're gone. Yeah. And you're right. It's like, that's what I'm saying. I don't want to understand. We say we want a woman with no kids, but that's what we've got. We're leaving kids behind. Kind of black. Says, I will be coming over with a $2,300 pension and money in the bank. My only problem is making it look like I don't have money. Well, you don't have to do that. Because remember, no matter what you do, they already going to think you got money. And they know that you're not over here. The people who stay over here, they know you got at least 
the kind of money that can change their life. But you don't want that. You don't want to change and all of that. Just be yourself. You don't want to start. I didn't come over to hide and, and all of that. You don't have to let the woman know how much your pension is, how much you got in the bank. But you're not going to come over here to deny yourself just for the sole purpose of letting her think that you you don't have anything. Okay? You want to come over here and live your life. Then you put the woman inside of it. Okay? I'm telling you guys, with that $1,000, if you're going to be single, you can do it. But we're not going to do it. Yeah, he said, I want a woman 55 and over. Yeah, well, be careful what you wish for over here, buddy. But everybody has their own needs. A 55-year-old woman over here is old, decrepit, really. Pussy got cobwebs in it. You don't want, you don't want that, dude. A woman already went through her. Uh, you can get that at home. Matter of fact, I can go home in America right tomorrow and get a 55-year-old grandmother. But I know what's going on over here. I know the game that's being played. I'm not going to fool myself. I know the game that's being played over here. They've been playing it since 1899. You're not going to change the game, and neither is she. And I don't care what you say about, oh, I got a good woman. Yeah, you got a good woman. But the minute she decided to start fooling with foreigners, she was changing already. Meeting you just sped it up. Now, if you depend on how long y'all been together, she's westernized because you westernized her. There's something called osmosis. Look it up. Human beings can go through it. And that's what she goes through by being around you 24 hours a day. She starts adopting your ideas, your way of thinking, your attitudes, and your standard of living. She can't go back to the squatter era anymore. You know what? She's going to be right back on that dating site if you break up with her. Getting fit says, I don't think I want a woman that's too young. I would like someone 30 plus. They're wiser about life and themselves. I don't mind if they have a kid as long as the father's out of the picture. Yeah. And a lot of times that's what's going on. Uh, Peter B says, I'm looking for a better quality of life, not looking for anything. If I date every now and then, that's cool. Yeah, see, if you really going to do that, Peter B, you're not going to have any problems. But I, I've seen very few retirees that are single, single over here. And Filipinas date to marry. They're not, you can fool them once or twice. You ain't going to fool them three times. And then the third time, you're going to start having feelings anyway. If she's, you know, a normal Filipina, you know, they, they grow on you. But you're not going to fool these women, man. They're not stupid. OK, they're smart. They're a lot smarter than what we give them credit for. She already knows what to expect. Uh, Jay Curl says me and my wife stay in Pampanga. And no matter how much we try to save, we're over the thousand dollar mark. Yeah, because it's going to take that. You know, when you with somebody. Peter, Phil Stevens says you can't come here and act cheap. It's not going to fly. Yeah, I wouldn't do that anyway. That, that's that's a bad plan. Don't act cheap. Just be yourself, man. They're going to think you got more money anyway. It says Derek says very few women want to be with a broke guy. Just manage your money properly. Yeah. And see, they don't think you're broke. It's better that they think you got money than you don't. If they think you don't have any money or nothing to offer, they're women like all other women. They don't want anything to do with you. What makes you think these beautiful young women over here want to fool with your crusty ass? Because you who you say you are. When you come over here, your identity, no one knows who you are and no one cares. Okay? You better play the game. 
Okay, if you don't know about a game, I've watched some of my videos. I've told you about the game. It's being played over here. I didn't create it. You didn't create it, nor did she. Tim West says, I don't have children of my own and had a bad experience dating a single mother where I'm from. I learned to take my time to get to know her before getting intimate with anyone, children or not. And see, you're... You're talking about something different now. Yeah, you don't have any children, so yeah, you can you can say you can. Uh, what's the word I'm trying to? You know, you can put that out there then. You know, but if I'm coming over here and I've got three or four children already, what I look, I'm a hypocrite to say I don't want a woman with children. Nicholas Cherry says, 2023 is my year. I'm making big moves to get off the hamster wheel this year, man. That's a great plan, man. You got to have a goal. Hybrid 7-Eleven says two black opposing quarterbacks in the Super Bowl for the first time. Yeah, two, two great individuals. That's a fact. Now, if we can get two black team owners in the Super Bowl at the same time, wouldn't that be something? Hey, Bouncer Life said, the grass will always be greener there. Get you someone that will roll with you and can handle money and you can build a life there, yeah? Well, that, that's asking a lot, man. It can handle money. A lot of times, you got to teach her and she's got to teach you some things. If you unteachable, I wouldn't come here. You, even though we're old, and, you know, we're older. You got to have an open mind over here because she's going to be able to teach you some stuff. And you certainly going to have to teach us some stuff, especially about money and about priorities. Okay. Hey, Cornell Gill says, wow, hi from Cuba. Man, I'm impressed, brother. Sean Lawrence says, cobwebs. Yes, true. Uh, Sam Chapman said, Cal, I see from the way some of these guys are positioning themselves, they are doomed to fail and blame the Filipino for it. Yeah, we come over here with these old jacked up expectations, which is nothing wrong with that. OK, but it's the same thing you're running from. We're looking like hypocrites. You know, the women over there, their expectations are way out of line with reality. And that's why I don't date them. So I'm not going to come over here and, and, and have my expectations be way out there somewhere where I'm never going to be able to, to attract anybody or have anybody. Yeah, yeah. You know, you don't want, you know, some guy, you know, I can't tell a guy that he doesn't want a 55-year-old. I mean, it's, that's his preference, but, you know, we age differently over here. Haywood hey, Johnson said, the Jedi man trick doesn't work. Yeah, all that hiding and playing games, they can see straight through you. First of all, you're a foreigner. They already know what to expect from you, whether you're trying to hide it or not. She knows you're not going to fly all the way over here, 20 hours, get you an apartment here and be broke. Jacob Tanzi said, the horse is out of the barn and in the meadow, can't put her back in. That's right. The woman does not change when you take her to America or England or whatever. She's already changed. By the time she gets over there, man, it's just a, a formality, really. Merlin's never been to America, man. And hell, she's westernized already. He said a child is okay, a dog is a big no. Yeah, yeah, the standard of living, yeah, they, they're going to grow accustomed to that. No matter what you say. Hey, Link1111, one, 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 one. he said, hey, hello, Calvin. Stopping by to say hello to you and the crew. Thank you, brother. The balance of life says usually the woman you meet would never have much of anything initially. You would spend money giving her things she never had. Yeah. And she's going to give you things you never had. And it's an unspoken agreement that you both, you know, agree to. 
All right. Because I don't know in the last time you've been with a 22 year old, probably when you were 22. But if you're going to come over here and be with a 22 year old, beautiful woman, you know, it's, you can't get it. You can't get that for nothing. He said something like the crust. <laughs> Absolutely. All of this goes into play. He said, men's daily advice and encouragement challenge says, so should your budget depend on if you stay or live in the city or province of the Philippines, being involved with women or doesn't matter? No, it, all of that goes into play. That's why I say budgets are like assholes. We all got them. Some are bigger than others. It depends on, it's too many parameters to really say, but I'm going on record to say, the 1,000 won't work if you've got a woman. It's just no way I could make it work. I, I couldn't make it work. I just couldn't do it, man. I wouldn't want that life over here. I could live off $1,000 by myself because I did. I did a video on it. But that's just being me. It wouldn't include the woman, man, because she's going to want, her wants are going to increase. She's going to eat more. Her expectations are going to increase. She's going to want a new motorcycle or uh, some kind of motorcycle to get around. She's going to say, hey, you know, I'm tired of, she's not going to say that. She's going to say, let's get a motorcycle. It'll be a lot better than riding these jeepneys. She'll say it nice like that. She's not going to say, I'm tired of riding these slow ass jeepneys, man. I'm with a foreigner and my friends are looking at me like I'm stupid. Get a motorcycle, you cheap bastard. You know, this is what she's thinking in her mind. She's not going to say it. She's like, you know, it'd probably be better off to get a motorcycle. We can get, you know, we can, you know, we have, we're more independent and blah, blah, blah. She'll say it nice like that. Yeah, team owners. Yeah, that would be more like it. But, you know, here it is 400 years later and we're talking about two black quarterbacks. Well, hell, it's going to happen again. Tell me something that's going to impress me. That would really impress me. Now, okay, now here, here it is. What, you play for the Kansas City Chiefs? He said, I'm in Kansas City, Missouri. And yes, we Chiefs are. No, no, the Chiefs, buddy. Remember that. The Chiefs are heading to the Super Bowl, not yes. We are heading to you. You're not heading anywhere. But uh, Alfred Dunlap, now he knows, he knows. He said they definitely have a problem with handling money. Yeah, the kind of money that we give them. Okay, they can handle what they used to handle it. But when you come over here and give a woman 50,000 pesos per month, you know, to, to budget, and she's used to dealing with 5,000, that's like you. Okay, a guy sent me uh, his, he said, Calvin, he said, the only thing I'm going to miss about the West is my salary. And his salary was something like 87,000. That'd be like increasing his salary to 870,000. Do you think that he's going to change? Absolutely he's going to change. His spending how everything going to change. Stuff that he used to only dream about, he can now go out and buy. She's going to do the same thing, guys. That's why a thousand dollars won't get it over here. Ty Michael says, I bet Viagra sales are through the roof over here. They're really not. Because a young, beautiful woman is a Viagra. She's a natural Viagra. Because I thought when I came here in 2009, me and my wife wasn't doing nothing, man. I thought, I was like, well, hell, I'm 45. Maybe that's the age when you start going down like that. No. Nope. Hell, three kids later, I'm still rolling. And I haven't bought one blue pill since I've been here. Yeah, yeah, but you got to realize, he says, I know an older Filipino woman over here in the U.S. She's 53. And I, yeah, but she's over there. She hasn't lived her whole life over here. Okay. And there's always the exception to the rule. The rule is, she's the exception. The rule is 55 is old over here. 
Okay, and if that's what you like, the only time I'm going to date a 55 year old woman is when I'm 85. Okay. Yeah, she changed for a better life, period. Uh, Peter B says, I'm going to have you on the, I'm going to go on and have that um, panel on Sunday, Peter. He says, I've been married to a Filipino, lost two homes in Dumaguete area. I won't get married again. I live with a 34-year-old now, and I'm moving on. She don't want to go to the Philippines. That's my dream. Yeah, see? And I don't blame you. But, I mean, I wouldn't bring all of that foolishness over here. You get better choices. Yeah, absolutely. And, and they're not going to get you for free. Well, I always tell them this, Dana. He says, tell your viewers to come to the Philippines and see if they can stay there. The women are everywhere and, and should be the last thing on your mind. And that's, you know, everybody says that. But that wasn't even the case for you. You know, it wasn't the last thing on your mind or any reasonable thinking man. That's going to be at the top of the list, the woman. Okay. And then we try to work everything else around that. What you're saying is exactly what I've been saying for a long time, but it's not, it's the truth, but it's not realistic as to our situation. Everybody's going to come over here for that woman first. And then we'll try to build it around her instead of building it first and then finding the woman. We're not going to do it. We're going to get that woman first. We're not going to worry about the heat. We're not going to worry about the volcanoes, the typhoons. We're not going to worry about any of that stuff. The language, the food, we're not thinking about that stuff. And you know it, Dana. We're thinking about that woman. That's why this passport pro movement that popped up. These guys are traveling. I'm going to tell you right now, don't travel 8,000 miles for a woman. Travel for a better way, a better quality of life. That would be the, the truth. Okay, remember the video I did? That's, that's the real truth right there. But the, uns, the raw, unspoken truth is we come in here for a woman. You know, we, we want to play in the bed. Okay, we, we want all of that. And we want it for nothing. That's the raw and spoken truth. We want it for little or nothing. We think, oh, because she lives over here and she's only earning 400 pesos a day. Well, once you enter the equation, that goes way up, buddy. Everything, the dynamics change now. Link 11111 says, so the 24-year-old woman there, I like the 35-year-old women in the States. I wonder why that is. Could it be that life in that society forces them to grow up in a way to contrast to Westerners? Well, it's not that, but the society does force them to grow up quicker. Remember I did the video on the Filipino years? That's seven years older, guys, because... And the only reason I put that on there is because I looked at Marilyn. Marilyn was 11 years old when she started taking care of her siblings, cooking, cleaning, you know, all that, you know, have to go out on her own to get the food and everything like that. That would be something on the 18-year age. She was doing things that a woman, not even 18, does in America. When my daughter was 18, she wasn't doing any of that stuff. So, yeah, they're forced to do a whole lot more. So when you meet them, they're a lot older mentally, and they're a lot tougher than you think they are, than their age is, okay? And this is what I'll be trying to get over to you guys, but you're not listening. Y'all think that you can just come over here and run over these women. They're looking at you like, I already know you. I know what you want. I know why you're here. They know all of that already. You are the one at the disadvantage because you don't know anything about the Philippines over here. You don't know where you're going. You don't know where you are. She can flip a switch and be speaking a whole other language on you, man. You know, but we come over here all disrespectful. Oh, yeah, I don't want you. You got two kids. 
and all this and all that, you know. Or McMurphy says, do you think the days are over for retirement of 16 to 1800 a month? No, absolutely not. That's good money if you're going to be by yourself. But you're not going to be by yourself. If you want to come over here, okay, if you want to come over here for a sabbatical, to rest, to, to heal from the beating we take over there, for six months to a year and say, I'm enjoy this low cost of living, beautiful weather, the beaches, you know, I'm going to travel, I'm going to do everything I can't do at home. Man, are you going to have a great time. But if you want to come over 1600 1800 a month, can you do it? Absolutely. But when you have that woman, it's just going to, that's going to eat up that money, man. I'm just being, this. that's the raw, unspoken truth. The real truth is you can do it because they do it already. But you got the woman coupled with your spending habits already. See, your wants and needs aren't going to change just like that. You can't do it. It's going to take a while. Man, those two right there, it's a hell of a combination, man. You going down. That's like a right left from Tyson. Hey, Corner Clubhouse Cobalt said, best thing to beat the traffic in Manila is walking. Yeah, that's what it says here. Being a central location. Because there's an overwhelming majority of things to do in Metro Manila are in Manila proper, Makati, BGC, if you can afford it, and the Mall of Asia. So if you're somewhere around there where you don't even need the, the traffic, you know, if you don't even need to get in that traffic, then do that. Uh, he said, Calvin, keep me real tonight. No. I woke up out of my sleep last night. I said, man, why don't I tell these guys that they can come over here and live on a $1,000, knowing they're not going to come over here and live by themselves? I literally woke up at 439 and wrote this stuff down and made that video just to get it off my chest, you know, and say, no, I'm not going back on what I'm saying because you can do it, but we're not going to be womanless over here. He says, I'm rooting for the chief. Now, that's another way of saying it. Yeah, yeah, they do have the power suggestion, and that's how they're going to get you to do things. They're not going to be confrontational and straight out front like we're used to over there. They're going to say, I'm tired of walking. I'm tired of eating rice and, and salt every damn day. They're not going to say that. He says, absolutely. It's like 10 times your salary. Okay. Even for even for a woman, okay, that has a good job, she's earning 25000 per month. Now you're going to give her an extra 50000 So now she's got 75000 She's got that 50000 to play with because the 25000 she's already managed that to hell. She's got loans on that. You know, she's stressed to, she, you know, all out of shape with that 25000 So 50000 is going to give her some breathing room. He said 55 is a speed limit, not an age. Hey, Christian Detail said, Cal, I have a lady in Philippines that's two older boys and own her own business for over 17 years and told me from day one, does not need my money, but want me for me. So how rare for men? Well, you know, you can run into that situation over here. I mean, you know, but what's that going to cost you dealing with a woman like that? Are you jumping from the frying pan into the fire? You got to ask yourself, do you want that type of woman over here? This is going to be because Filipinas are going to, they're going to henpeck you anyway, dude, whether, whether they got two pesos they can rub together. They're going to be on you like white on rice. So how much more is she going to be, how much more controlling is she going to be if she's got all of that and she wants you for you? How do you know she wants you for you? Have y'all been together already? But what is it going to cost you in the long term? Anything can go on in the short term. Come on, guys. 
We grown men. Use your common sense. It's no different over here than it is in your Amer in America, really. Just a different package. Yeah, the culture is different. But the humanity, the humanness is the same, guys. The global vagabond said, I can't understand why older men, older men would fly 8,000 miles to get married in a country they know little about. I witnessed a colleague lose everything in 65 that he had worked his whole life for. Well, because we're in that fourth quarter, global vagabond, where a lot of us feel we don't have nothing to lose. We paid our dues and we want to fly over here and get married to a beautiful young lady. Then so what, you know? You're rolling the dice no matter what. I mean, so what are we supposed to do? Stay at home and be miserable? There's a quote, and I just got finished reading The Alchemist. And it says, everybody seems to know what you should do to lead your life, but not for their own life. You know, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. And that's what this comment is right here. We seem to know what's best for everybody else, but not ourselves. Let them guys make their mistakes, man. I mean, it's not for you to understand. Let them do it if they want to do it. Okay, you saw one bad story, and I've seen a lot, but I guarantee you there's probably just as many, I'm going to say just as many good stories as it is bad. But just because do you think that stops people from going to the casino, the global vagabond? They know everybody coming out of there is losing. They see them long faces, but they run in there anyway. You know why? Because they think, oh, it's not going to be me. I'm going to do things different. Try to get in front of that casino door and stop those people from coming in there, losing everything. And you'll get what I'm talking about. It's exactly what happens when we come over here. You know. He said, yeah, we've been for two years and she has been to the States and I've been there. Yeah, you know, but just be careful, man. You know, when, when a woman got that, all of that, you know, women here are going to impact you no matter what. Control is big over here. And whether they live in the squatter area or not, I live in that fancy place where that woman lives. So how much more are you going to uh, have to deal with? And then if things go south, she can afford to, to have that two-man tandem come around. See, uh, D. Johnson, Don Johnson says, they're an expat cemetery there for when they take all our money and no money left for states at burial. Well, what they do is they'll cremate you. They'll cremate you. And they'll give the girl the ashes. But nobody comes over here. I, I wouldn't come over here with that attitude. I'd come over here with a positive attitude. Because most of the time, no matter where you live, this is a fact. This isn't something I'm making up. We get what we are. We don't get what we want. We get what we are. So if you bad and, you know, you negative, that's what you're going to get more than likely over here. Anywhere else you go in the world. But if you got a positive attitude, okay, and you don't need a woman to complete you, like a lot of the guys over here, they don't. You're probably going to be okay because you're going to be able to sit back, okay, and look at the, the whole picture. And you're going to make the decision, and you need to make it real quick. Do I want to deal with this? Because the longer you stay in there, the more she weaves their web. It's going to be hard to get out of that. Hey, Kristen Taylor, thank you, Brother Cal, for your honesty. Hope to meet you and your family with my family this summer. Yeah, I mean, I, absolutely, brother. And I'm not discouraging you. I'm just saying, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. But um, consider yourself fortunate. He says, uh, global vagabond, it's like, it's the same as a man working all of his productive years here, raising kids, 
buying property only for his wife to roll over one night and say she's not happy. Ask me how I know. Yeah. What's up, chocolate man? He said, just tapping in and say, what's up, Cal? Some interesting comments today, but you handling big. Hey, thanks, man. Yeah, don't discourage guys from coming over here, man. Get in front of that casino door. Knowing good and well at the end of the night, 93% of people that walk through those doors leave, they lose. But it's going to be even more people coming the next day. Uh, no, Mr. Brand. He says, Calvin, do you think that the Filipino people ever have concerns about foreigners changing the culture? And do you think the Philippines can become like the States? Absolutely not. And we were kind of talking about this on Facebook. A friend of mine says, oh, I don't like the way you can't own property over here. You can't do this. You can't do that. And I said, look at their history, man. 350 years colonized by Spain. 50 years by the United States. They've enacted legislation that says never again will we be second class citizens, literally slaves in our own country. And it's the same way, man. The Filipino culture, traditions, and everything go back thousands, thousands, thousands of years, man. We're not going to change it with our frivolous, petty uh, attitudes that come over here, man. We're nothing really over here. We're not doing anything to change the culture, really. And I hope, I hope they would devil. He said the casino reference is a great point. Just learn something. Thank you. Yeah, brother, you know, and I wasn't hitting you over the head. I just like to kind of counteract that kind of stuff. So when, not to discourage anybody, and that's not why I made that video. Hey, Katie Black, thanks for that super chase. Hey, Calvin, I appreciate your insight. And thank you, man. You know, I'm from 59. I'm running 60. Um, and that's just some of my life experiences, man, really is what it is. And being around other people, learning from them, reading. I've read three books in the last 30 days. I'm proud of that. But that's not why I did that video. But, yeah, that, here's some of the reasons why they say the traffic is so bad in Manila. It says a lack of good alternatives to driving. Okay. And that's true, but they're working on that. That's part of this infrastructure, this mass transit. They're working on it. But it's inadequate right now with the MRT, the LRT, and of course, buses and jeepneys. Hell, they're part of the problem. It says inefficient design especially around U-turns and merges. You see a lot of the U-turns over here. And remember, they've got a free-for-all mentality when they drive. So somebody may be a U-turn halfway in the damn uh, road. You know, so the people over here are passing, but the other people here, they got to wait for this guy to make his turn. Then it says weak enforcement of traffic laws. You know, there's just, I mean, what are you going to enforce? Nothing from nothing leaves nothing. There is no laws unless you're a foreigner involved in a traffic accident. When you come to a major thoroughfare where there's no lights, there's no flashing yellow lights, there's no yield signs, stop signs or nothing. I mean, what kind of Enforcement of you supposed to, what type of laws are you supposed to enforce? But it's just a warning, guys. If you get caught up there in that Manila traffic, you got hell to pay. You got hell to pay. And I do want to mention this. If you've seen on my community page, Maryland. I started Maryland business. It's Maryland business, not mine. It's registered in her name. We're going to rent these motorcycles, these scooters, really. The scooters, 400 per day. If you're in San Carlos City, because nobody else offers it, okay? 
it's hard to even rent a car or van without you have to have the driver too. But scooters, nobody's doing that. That we'll be the only one. But if you want to do that, it's something to do. It's four hundred for the Honda Click one twenty five, four hundred per day, unlimited mileage. And for the Honda PCX one sixty, it's four fifty. I want to put that out there because I asked Merlin to give up a lot. She quit her job. I'm just trying to help her just in case I'm not around. Something like that could run on its own. She could even rent that guest house if I'm not there. She could rent that. She could run a deal like Derek is running, which he's full now, you know, because it's a hell of a deal. Imagine 1,100 pesos. You get the room and the motorcycle. Where in the world could you get that? In a gated community with a swimming pool, with a tennis court, with basketball court, with a park, and free uh, Vietnamese coffee. Uh, Kristen, tell us, how can I support the channel? And thank you for stepping out. Oh, man, I'm from Memphis. Ten and heard you visit before. Yeah, I was stationed in Millington, Kristen Taylor, um, for almost two years. It was my first duty station, Millington, Tennessee, and I love Bill's Twilight, 380 Bill. This is way back in the 80s, early 80s. But, you know, I got a PayPal. I've got a cash out now that my daughter is kind of handling. And usually it's in my description. If you if you enjoy my content, you want to support my channel. You know, it's it's not a requirement. But uh, you know, I, I put that out there. But yeah, I, I love Memphis. It's one of the my favorite cities, but now it's in the news for something totally different. I saw where the young man got beat to death. And, you know, I read an article in my home newspaper that said nothing's going to change. These are politicians and all these leaders are going to come out and say, oh, we won't change. And nothing's going to happen. It's going to rinse. I mean, wash, rinse, and repeat. That's all that's going to happen. Uh, Vince Lawson says, Uncle, if you lived in a major city, would you have bought a condo instead of a house in St. Carlos being hindsight? No, because... You're not getting anything for, I, I'd really have to be, with my situation, Vince, and you know my situation, you've been to my house. It's me, Marilyn, Booby, Sahara, Sophia. But what they want for them condominiums in big cities, I couldn't afford it. I have to go where my money's going to go the furthest or the farthest. And since I, you know, I've got a daughter who's a Filipino, I went on and built a house, man. You know, because I don't look at the uh, negative side of things. I always try to look on the bright side of things. And you know, the money that I spent there, it's not, it's not going to break me. I didn't spend eleven million. I spent more like two million. And over here, that's a fortune. But, you know, nothing's too good for Booby, you know. I'm good. I'd spend it all for her if I had to, which I have, basically. That's why I did that. Uh, the Balance of Life said, did you hear about the double amputee that the police killed because they were praying for their lives, shot him in the back? You know, I don't even look at the news. Very seldom do I look at the news because I know what's coming over there. It's just so heartbreaking. I, I wouldn't do it. it. What's the point of me moving over here if I'm going to stay in contact with the news over there? It's all negative. They don't show anything positive. But, what, nobody buys positive news. So they're going to show stuff like that. I mean, I don't understand why they even showed the video of the man getting beat to death if it's not going to change anything. This is what I don't understand. It's like they showed it 
to 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 rile people up so they can go out and tear up even more and because nothing's going to change. There's going to be somebody else that's going to get killed. And then we'll be right out here doing the same stuff over and over. You got to change that culture. You got to go all the way back in the history of the police to even understand what's going on, man. It's not as simple. It, it, you know, it, it is pretty simple what's going on. But all this, all we shall overcome and then these You'll hear something from Biden. He'll say something, and you see where, uh, um, what's his name, Sharpton? He's you know shame. He's wagging his finger. Shame on you, black police, killing him. You know Martin Luther King lost his life so you can become a police. That's true, but it's not going to change anything. And that's all we're going to do. And you know, pretty soon. People are going to forget. No one thought of George Floyd until this happened. Katie Black said, number crap going on. I know, man. I, I don't like to hear it. V3 Shades Darker said, you're right, Cal. My place is starting at $10 million and up. We're rent in that area for 4,000 pesos a night. One of my boys have one and he's booked out one year yeah see that's what i'm saying that's a lot of money man hey gleason he said hello cal uh john gomez is sad cal i live in nassau county and guess who represent my county yeah george santos yeah it's not gonna change man yeah he said that's the attitude all over the nation sir all over the nation but, you know, the thing about it is nothing's really changed for real. I'm 59. Nothing's changed over that. It's still the same stuff going on as when I was little, man. Not, nothing's changed, man. America, we're infatuated with race, and people don't even realize that white supremacy has infiltrated everybody's lives over there. Even white people, certainly black people, they say, oh, well, black, it was black police that killed the man, you know, not understanding what white supremacy really is and what it does. It infects everybody. Yeah, and it's depression, man. And, 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 and really, I'm sad, sorry that he brought that up because now my man is infected. I was in a good mood now. Now all of a sudden I'm thinking about that over there. And here I am over here. Tall Barber said, good morning, Cal. Hope you're feeling better. I am, man. Kamal says, sure, they show positive news in the final three minutes of the hour. Yeah, you're right. When everybody can cut that off, I don't even listen to it after that. Hey, Michael Alexander, thanks, brother, for that super chat. He said, I love you. Great information. Thanks, man. There's the super chat. I like to show this, man. What's up, K Dallas? Thanks for that super sticker. TJ said, showed up in time for at least catch the back end of this. Hope everyone's having a good day. When you coming back in, in the country, TJ? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm changing the subject, man. That's, whew, that's some bad stuff. But, you know, avoid the rush hour, man, when you fly into Manila. It's mid-morning, they're saying, 7 a.m. to 9.30 a.m., and then 5 p.m. until night, they say. That's the rush hour. But you're still going to get caught into it. The last time I was in Manila and I flew out of Manila, this is facts, man. This is a true story. I said, well, hell, I'm going to just get up. My, my flight was at 6. I'm just going to go at 4 a.m. to the airport. And then when I won't meet, I'll beat the crowd. No. I get caught up in it. I said, yesterday, New York snowed just enough to count as snow and thus disqualify the snow-free January. Oh, okay. He says, uh, me and my fiance spent 1.5 million pesos for our second property 
to farm on. Yeah, see, that's about, you know, altogether, like I said, I spent about two million. Yeah, you're not going to go broke on that. If something goes wrong, okay, I can take that hit, but 11 million, 20 million, 12 million, that's a lot of money over here, man. I mean, at our age, that's money that you could ride off into the sunset with. Now, I'm, I'm, I'll be 60. God will, and the creek don't rise. May 28, I'll be 60. If I took that two million that I spent, let's say, let's just say two and a half million that I spent on my little property over there, okay. Um, but that would probably last me until I could get my Social Security. Yeah. Reggie Carson says, this is Reggie, guys. He came back over here. Remember him and his little daughter? I put that picture on my community page. They look just alike. He said, finally caught the first live stream in two weeks. Just got back home 10 a.m. this morning, brother. Oh, man, I'm glad you got back safe. Yeah, Reggie came here, and the woman wouldn't let him see his daughter, man. It's really heartbreaking, guys. I would love to have him on his sh on the show with his daughter. Y'all remember his story. But now the word is the woman wants to come back. Remember, she ran off. He was doing the right thing, doing the K-1 and you no, know, found out she was fooling around and ran off with another man. Well, that relationship didn't work out. So now she wants to come back with Reggie. Okay. Well, good for you, brother. You saw straight through that. Okay, Louise, thank you, brother, for stopping by. He said, hey, brother, I have to head out and talk to you soon. Thanks for all your support, Louise, man. I mean that. I know he's coming here February 5th. But yeah, Reggie, man, I want to tell you to keep taking care of your daughter, man. Don't let your daughter suffer because of that. But if y'all think I'm playing about this stuff, when you have children over here, man, and it goes south, a lot of times, man, you're not going to be, they don't want to let you see the child. Me and my son, my first son, we're making a, we're climbing up a hill, man. We're going to make it because that's what happened. I, I couldn't take him with me nowhere. I could go see him only at that house up there in those mountains or meeting at the mall or somewhere like that. She never taught him English. All of that, you know, just to get me, get back at me. Then we gave. I could only see him in Zambonga. They're going to do that, guys. Be careful now. You know, when you have children over here, just know that there's going to be some difficulties, man, when you split up. But they're going to want that money to keep coming. That's a fact. Hey, Dana, he says, I'm a travel agent, and I won't fly into Manila because even going from one terminal to another is a major pain. Oh, I'm glad you brought that up. And it can get you confused. Make sure if you're flying into Manila, you know what terminal you're flying into. Because sometimes you can fly into two, right? I know one is like the international, but the last time I flew out of Manila, I actually flew out of two. But it depends on what airline. We flew, we were on ANA. But it could have changed because it's been 2017. What's up, Austin? Yeah, but I'm great. Get out for you guys. I gotta get checked out. I'm only here for because I I'm doing my extension. I went on and did my extension. And I let JRC do it from now on. And then you leave your passport and come back and get it. I'm here in Dumagetti. So I'll be the minute they say it's ready, I'm gonna go get it and just head to the bus station. Reggie says, it's it's all good, Mr. Cal. In Jesus' name, everything will turn out to be good. I stay with a positive mindset as long as we learn 
from everything we experience, man. See, that's a great way to look at it. But, you know, you come here and all this way to see your daughter. She won't let them see her. You know, you're hurting the daughter, lady. I hope you're watching this. You're not hurting Reggie as much as you're hurting your daughter. They look just alike. Don't hold him from his daughter. It's going to be certain things. And this is what I told the two mothers of my children. It's going to be certain things only I can tell my children. When they're going to look around and see that they're different, I'm going to have to set that record straight. There's nothing you can do about that. You know, you know, that's why, you know, I, I'm not taking a foot off of this continent into boobies straight. OK. 53 Shades Darker says, but think about this. It's only 500 a month. You own it and your kids can have it. It's in an area that's frequented by money. So so your rent is actually paying your condo. Yeah, you, you can look at it like that as an investment. But I mean, you know, just as far as, you know, we needed something. See, a lot of times when you buy these condos, they're not ready to occupy. You have to prepay and, you know, all of that. We needed some place, you know. I just wanted to do it. It was always my dream to build a house over here because I knew how inexpensive you could do it. I saw people doing it. I met a foreigner in Bacala right, right around the time I was built, I started building my house. And he had built a house for 600,000 pesos. It was nice. He owns a little pizza shop, him and his girlfriend. Well, his wife now, they're married. He was headed back to the States. That was September of 2021 when I met him. And he built the house for 600000 Okay, John, have a great day. He says, uh, TJ says, my hatred of NA <laughs> Nia is well documented, but it's a necessary evil. Yeah. Terminal 3 is the Gen Purpose International Terminal. Terminal one is mostly domestic, but some international. Yeah, time flights too, yeah. Uh, Michael Burns says hand pink waving. Yeah, guys, thank y'all so much for your super chats, your super stickers, your thumbs up, all your support, Sunshine Shoulders. Go watch my video why I no longer support the $1,000 per month budget in the Philippines. And don't beat me up too bad. I'm just telling you that it's not reasonable when you're going to have a living. And majority of retirees that you see over in the Philippines, they got to live in. That's why it's, it's, it's going to be difficult, if not impossible. Okay. Um, also, if you're in the San Carlos City, Nicholas Occidental area, and you need transportation, I said I'm Maryland with a little small business, two motorcycles. She's renting them out. 400 a day for the brand new unlimited miles. You take them anywhere you want as long as you bring them back. Um, Honda Click 125. Is 400 per day. The Honda PCX 160 is I mean, 450 per day. Take care, everybody. Stay safe. Stay COVID free. I'll see y'all next time.